Hello everyone. Now that we're getting a little bit more comfortable with rays, I'd like to give you a really interesting application of that, which we'll revisit again later in the course when we do ray tracing, but I want to strike while the iron is hot and while everybody's fresh on the math for rays. So the application I want to talk about is ray reflections. So let's say that I select this line segment here, and then let's say that I select this ray. So the ray pointing in this direction. What I want to solve for is this reflection off of the line as if the line were a perfect mirror. And what that means is the angle that the incoming ray makes with the normal here at the line segment is exactly the same as the angle of the outgoing ray with respect to the normal. So that's our goal. And just to show you, let me move the, the, the line segment around a little bit. Um, actually, one thing you'll notice is, is even if um, the ray is beyond the line segment, it still shows a reflection. Uh, we'll deal with that in a moment. Um, we'll make sure that the intersection of the ray actually occurs within the line segment. For, but for now, we'll treat it like an infinite line. And so, see again, as I move this around, it's making that perfect angle there. All right, so before I do this in code, I do need to, to just tell you a little bit of math about it. And so let's try to recreate this scenario with some variables here. So as usual, the ray is described by an endpoint P0 and a direction vector V. So let's suppose that, that this is the direction vector here. Let me give it a nice arrow to depict that. All right, so, so that's our direction vector V. And now let's choose, let's choose the endpoints of a line segment. So let's say maybe I'll put the first endpoint up here. I'll put the second endpoint down here. Let me get that out of the way. And again, I'll start by you know, considering the, the, just the line through them. So, so not just as a line segment, but I'll use them to, to create a line. So let me draw that line here. Goes through the points. Two points determine a line. Oops, let me get that here. And here we go. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is solve for the normal. I mentioned that that was something I would have to know in order to know the perfect angle in and angle out. Now, I'm depicting this situation in two dimensions. Um, the math is very similar if you're in three dimensions. In that case, you would have a plane. You might compute the normal by using a cross product like we've been doing when I give you three points in a triangle. Um, I just want to tell you a little trick about how to do this in two dimensions, which is kind of neat. So let's suppose that I constructed the vector um, from A to B. So let's, let's, or let's see, yeah, that's fine. I'll construct a vector from A to B. And let me just pick that as a vector there. So, so there's my arrow. And so that's going to be the, the vector you would write it mathematically as, as B minus A. Um, I'll call it just AB for short. But, you know, we remind ourselves that this, this is going to be equal to B minus A. Okay, so, so there's that vector. Let me put some coordinates onto it. So let's, let's suppose that this, that this is equal to the vector x, y in two dimensions. And so now what I want to do is construct a normal. So I need a vector that's perpendicular to a, b. Um, and just based on the picture that I have here, I might like to make the normal um, point to the left. Although it actually won't matter too much if I make it point to the right. Turns out it'll sort of work itself out and cancel out later. Um, let me actually draw the normal. So, so eventually there's going to be a point of intersection, right? So let me, let me draw that point of intersection first, and then actually I'll solve for the normal. So I'll just draw some dotted lines here to show you that, okay, if, if we move the ray forward, eventually there's going to be an, an, an intersection. I've talked about this in other modules, but you know, given the implicit form of a plane, or a line in this case, just one dimension lower, uh, given the parametric form of rays, then, then there's an equation you can use to find that point of intersection. We'll, we'll return to that in a moment. Uh, but for now, we'll just take it for granted. We, we've, we found the point of the intersection here. Um, let me call this P, actually. Okay, so this, this vector here is AB. And then I'll call the, the point of intersection P. So let me just get that here. And I want to figure out, okay, what are the coordinates of the normal? And I'll put the origin of the normal here just to show us what's going on. So, and, and that's kind of where I will look at the angle in and the angle out. 
Okay, so the coordinates are the normal. I, I need a vector that's perpendicular. And, and if I remember the way that the, that the dot product rule works, um, if I can choose a vector whose dot product is zero with respect to the normal, then I will have this. And so one way I can do that is by making the x coordinate be um, y and the y coordinate be negative x. So let's check that here. So we have a vector that's pointing down from A to B. So that would have a negative y coordinate. That now becomes the x coordinate of the normal. So, so something that points to the left. Okay, that looks good, right? And then, okay, it's, it's, it's going to, I mean, the x coordinate's almost zero here, maybe slightly positive. Maybe this line is, is going slightly to the right. And so then I would find that, the, okay, the y coordinate of this is negative, something a little positive. So, so something a little bit negative pointing slightly down. Okay, so you can kind of see it in the picture here. Um, but again, if I check the dot product, y times x plus negative x times y is zero. So this is a very nice trick to, if you are in two dimensions and you have two coordinates, um, this is a nice trick to construct a vector which is perpendicular to another vector. Okay, so the normal is perpendicular to the vector from a to b. And those are the coordinates. So, so we'll do that in code in a moment. But for now, let me just let me just finish the picture. Try not to make this too busy here. Let me put the normal here. Okay, so let me finish the picture. And basically what I'm trying to get at here is, oops, I don't want to copy that to just the line. Um, what I'm trying to get at is I want a line that, so um, it comes out the other way here with the exact same angle. I'm, sorry, I'm not trying to flip this too. Um, okay, so let me make that a solid line here and show you that, that, that this is actually the vector that I'm looking for coming out here. And again, we, we can kind of see it in the picture, but just to reiterate, um, the angle that's, that's coming in here is exactly the same as the angle that's going out. Whoops, okay, just need to Get my little theta there. I would like to see that. Whoops. Okay, I'm trying to draw this this here. Just a little line segment or just a little angle marker to show that these are the same angle. Okay, great. Okay, so we got the normal. And now what we want to do is solve for a new ray whose endpoint is the point of intersection of the first ray. I'll call it P. And whose direction is W. Okay, so, so we need to solve for, for this vector. We have the endpoint. That's something we can compute by intersecting the ray with, with the plane or the line. But we actually need this vector now going out here. And so to get that, um, let me first actually construct the vector all the way from P0 to P. So I'll call this, you know, this is gonna end up being P minus P0, all right? So maybe it may be helpful if I throw a color on this vector. So I will color this vector, let's say, blue and then I will color this this blue as well okay so what I'm gonna do now is take this vector P minus P0 and I'm gonna copy it onto the other side of P so now I'm gonna make the origin of that vector be the point of intersection there okay so I'm just making a copy of P minus P0 and I'm putting it there and so what you what you notice here is that this vector is kind of what we're looking for. It has the right component in the direction from A to B, but it's pointing the wrong way with respect to the line segment. So, you know, it, it's going down just the right amount. It has the right component here, but it's pointing to the right here, whereas it should be pointing to the left, but by the same amount. Okay. So we somehow have to reflect this component, the component perpendicular to the line AB um, onto the other side. So to do that, what we're gonna do is project this vector P minus P zero onto the line segment AB. Um, actually, we're projecting it onto the normal. So, so sorry, notice how this is parallel to the normal vector. So we're gonna project it onto the normal, which is the perpendicular projection onto the line segment AB. So we've talked about projections, kind of know how to do those. And 
the way that that's going to happen is, okay, so, so we want to project this vector p minus p0. So what we need to do is um, we need to take the dot product of that with the normal. Um, we want to divide it by the normal dotted with itself and then multiply by the normal, right? So, so this is just the projection formula. Um, so, so, so again, we, there's just, there's a scalar multiplication of the quotient of the dot product of P minus P zero dot N. And then that's a scalar multiplication by, by the vector N. Okay, so I'm getting a little sloppy with my vectors here, but, but that's, that's the idea. Now, if I happen to normalize um, N, so, so, so if I were to divide each of these components, that, that um, formula would be simpler. But, but maybe I'll just keep it like that for now. Okay, so anyway, this is that vector. Okay, so this is the projection. I'll write it down to you. So this is the projection of, ooh, look at that, that's a funny style. Um, <laughs> this is the projection of um, P minus P zero onto N. Okay, that, that's what this vector is. And that's great. This this vector kind of goes the wrong way, though. So what we're going to do, maybe I'll just redraw this vector up here. Um, and, and what we're going to do is, is actually flip this vector the other way. So okay, so our minus here, here's the projection up here. Um, I'm going to take this vector and flip it the other way. So let me flip this horizontally. And I'm going to do the tip to tail method. So where I I say, okay, let me, so, so this is um, this is the projection of, of P minus P zero onto N. This is actually the negative projection of P minus P, P zero onto N. So if I add that to the tip of P minus P zero, so, so if I start at P, add the vector P minus P zero and subtract th this projection that I just computed, um, I get to this point here and if I subtract it one more time, then I end up exactly with the vector that I'm looking for, right? Okay, so let's trace it through again. Um, start at P, do P minus P zero, subtracted that projection, subtract the projection again, and then I end up exactly with this vector. So I end up at the tip here. So the tail takes me all the way over here and that is my vector w okay so, so i can write down the formula here so the vector w is equal to um p minus p zero so, so we started with that minus twice that projection that's it so so we go once and then we go again all right so, so let me just add minus two there. So there's our equation. <laughs> um, I guess I'll clean it up a little bit before I put it in the notes that I'll link in the description. Okay, so, so that's, that's how we compute the direction of the red. Now just to show you that there is, there is a language called GLSL that we'll be looking at later in the course that we use to program on um, the GPU. And if I go to a method here, uh, there's there's documentation in a method that, that says, okay, there's actually a built-in method for doing reflection in GLSL. Let's just see if that agrees at all with, with what I just came up with. So, so I have this equation here, and then GLSL tells me, okay, yeah, it's, it's this incident vector, so, so that's the P minus P0. Incident vector minus two, there's our, our two, times the dot product of the normal and um, the incident vector. Uh, then times the normal. Okay, so, so here's our scalar, negative two dot product. So the only difference with my formula is, is that I also have this dot product n dot n in the denominator. But if the normal is magnitude one, then that will drop out because uh, a magnitude one vector dotted with itself is one. So, so anyway, just to show you, hey, I actually agree with the official documentation for GLSL. Um, and here's the derivation that gets us there, All right? So now what I'd like to do is, is show you how to do this in code. Okay, so I've set up a little method here that takes all of the important parameters in. 
So, and I'm dealing with two-dimensional vectors for now, so I'll use GeoMatrix Vec2. But all the math here, except for the normal, which is very special for 2D, um, otherwise all the math is going to be the same for a plane, or really any dimension with this. Okay, so first thing I need to do is construct this vector from A to B, and then construct the normal. So let me, let me just get that over here so I can, can have a look. So vector from A to B, I'll just call it AB. So, so that's going to be um, vector.subtract, or sub for short. We're going to make a new vector, and we're going to subtract A from B, so B minus A. And then the normal is going to be, so I'm going to take here um, the Y component of AB, so AB at index 1 and then the negative x component, ab at index 0, negative ab at index 0. Okay, good. So I've got my vector ab, I've got the normal. Let me now go back to the equation for intersecting array with a plane here and try to get that ironed out. What I need to do is solve for the, per the ray parameter t that intersects me with the line between a and b. So let me compute, I'll compute the numerator first. Um, so actually this is going to be this is going to be a dot product so say vec2 dot dash um it's going to look a little messy but but it's okay so it's it's the um it's going to be vec2 dot well maybe i should make a, another intermediate vector here first i'll call it a a p0 so it's the vector from um or p0 a it was this vector i was just talking about over here so the vector um Oh, no, it's not. Sorry, it's a different vector. <laughs> We're talking about this vector from P0 to A. So I will call it P0A. Getting back to this equation here. So that is uh, P0A is A minus P0. All right, that's just part of what we need for, for the um, ray intersect plane. So the numerator then is going to be the dot product between that and the normal. And then the denominator is going to be um, the dot product between the ray vector and the normal. Okay. And so actually for this equation you can see it doesn't really matter if I normalize the normal or not because when I do the numerator over the denominator it'll cancel out. Uh, of course we know there's a special case I should check if the denominator is zero that would be if the ray were parallel to the line. Um, so I'll just make sure that, that the denominator is not equal to zero. And I will, so here's, here's what I'm gonna return. I'm eventually gonna return the, the end point of intersection and the direction, maybe by default, I'll set them both to be null. But if the denominator is not zero, I can proceed, I can compute my ray parameter. So I'll say let t is equal to the numerator of the denominator here. And then I can compute the point of intersection, which I called p here. So, so it's the ray endpoint plus, um, t times times the direction of the ray, which actually ends up being the same thing as p minus p0 that I drew here. So I can do that with a scale and add. So I'll say let p equals vec2 dot scale and add to dot create. Okay, so I'm gonna say, okay, starting at the ray endpoint p0, going in the direction v, I'm gonna go by this ray parameter t, and that's gonna give me the point of intersection. Excellent. All right. Before we go any further, let me, maybe I should just test this. I'll say, okay, let's just let the reflected um, P0 equal to this P. That, that's where the, it should intersect. And let me just try to run this code and see if I'm at least getting the intersection right. So if I were to select a line here, and then select a ray. Let's see, I'm getting a, it's not actually doing anything here. Let's see what it's saying in the console. Vec3 is not defined, did I default to Vec3 somewhere? Vec, yeah, okay. <laughs> we're, we're in two dimensions. I'm used to doing three dimensions. Um, okay, if I try this again. Okay, good. So it looks like the ray is intersecting in the right place. That's great. So no matter where I click, it sort of meets the line segment. So let me go and proceed and do the um, direction. So this is the harder part. This is where I need to do the, proje um, the projection first and then subtract twice of it. So let's do the projection. So that's going to be the projection of, um, now I, I have to construct P minus P zero. 
So that is going to be, um, yeah, I'll just, just do it straight up. So I'll say p p0 is equal to vec2 dot subtract vec2 dot create. Um, it's the vector from p uh, p0 to p, so, so it's p minus p0. So I should have said p0 p. Pop. Okay, so it's the vector from p, um, p0 to p. That's the one that I want to project onto the normal. So let me actually, just to save a little bit of math, I, I know that the denominator is going to drop out if the normal is normalized, so I'm actually just going to normalize the normal real quick. So let's say vec2 dot normalize and n. All right, so then this equation simplifies a little bit. It's just going to be the dot product of p0 p with n, scalar multiplied by n. So it's like okay, let um, projection equal vec2 dot dot. So it's dot product of uh, p0 p with n. And we actually want to scalar multiply that. Um, yeah, so maybe I should do, I'll just make this the projection first, but then I want to scale or multiply that by, uh, that's actually just a scalar. So, so I want to say, okay, that is the scalar we multiply the normal by, or sorry, that's the scalar that we multiply. Yeah, yeah, sorry, by the normal, because it's going to be in the direction of the normal. Okay, so I say proj then equals, so maybe I'll just call this the scale. So then I'll say let proj equal vec2 dot scale to create. So I'm going to scale the normal by this scale, right? So that gives me a, a vector in the direction of the normal with the proper length. Um, okay, so now final step here, I'm going to say that the, the direction of this vector um, that I ultimately want, this direction, this, this vector w, which is going to be my direction vector out of the reflection here. That is going to be, so, so I might as well just assign it directly to um, the thing I'm going to return here, which is the direction vector. That is going to be, I'll say vec two dot scale and add. That is going to be um, this 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 vector p zero p minus twice this projection. So then I'll put a negative two in there. That's what it ends up looking like um, in Geomatrix. Okay, let's see, did I get it? <laughs> let's just check real quick. Um, so I'll select my line segment, select my right, and there we go. Nice, I had it. All right, very good. So just one more thing I want to try to handle here. Um, if the point of intersection happens to, to be outside of the line segment, I don't want to return anything. So if I want to go that, that one step further, um, let's just talk about that real quick. So you could probably figure this out if you thought about it long enough, but I'll just tell you how, how it'll work. So if I've got a line segment um, between two points, and I want to know if a particular point is on the inside of the line segment or not, uh, what I can do is, is compute the length of the line segment and then compare it. So, so I've got another point on the line. So let me call it, maybe I'll call it C. So, so this point is on the line, but ne not necessarily on the line segment itself. So I'll call this C, showing you that it's actually on the line, but not the line segment. So if I draw a nice dotted line through this whole thing, you see that it goes through, okay, I kind of eyeballed it, but it wasn't quite there. Uh, so let me actually put C on the line there. So one thing I notice about C, if I move it on the inside of A, B, um, the length from C to A, so I'm trying to get this, <laughs> it's very annoying sometimes to select the right thing. Um, if, if C is on the inside of A, B, then the length of A, C and the length of B, C is always shorter than the length from A to B. On the other hand, if, if C is, is on the line somewhere else, then at least one of the distances will be longer, right? So you, so you see here the distance from A to C is actually longer than the distance from A to B. So what I can do is just make sure that, the, that the, this point of intersection, so, so really before I proceed 
to do any of this stuff. Um, I should just make sure, yeah, yeah, so, so as soon as I compute the point of intersection, before I proceed to do anything else, um, let's just make sure we're on the inside of AB. And so I guess I'll say, okay, let AB len is equal to vec2 dot length AB. So this is just the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. Um, now I need to compute the length of um, AP, I guess is what I'm calling it. I called it C in that picture, but, but this it's it's the point that, that is on the line somewhere, possibly inside the light, might say possibly not. So that would be um, vec2 dot length vec to dot subtract. So it gets a little cumbersome with, with geometric sometimes, but um, okay, so this is going to be P minus A. And then the length um, BP also. No, not British Petroleum. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so I've got this. And so, so what I'm checking now is I need to make sure that, that um, AP is less than or equal to AB length. I guess maybe I'll call this AB, AP len. BP len. So the length from A to the point has to be less than or equal to, to that, and the, the length from B to the point has to be less than or equal to that. And so let's see if that did the trick. So I'll just put all of this inside and say, hey, don't even worry about the reflection or anything like that until you've determined that, that the point is on the inside. All right, so I'll just put that here, make sure we're inside of AB. And let me try to run that code again. So I'll select my array here, select the line. Okay, so, so far so good. And hey, look now, actually, as soon as um, my line segment is not actually gonna be hit, it doesn't show it. So it seems like we got it. Very nice. So I'll provide this code. Um, as a solution and also provide a link to the web page that has the starter code if you wanted to try this again yourself. All right, but I hope that was enlightening. Um, we will return to this later when we do ray tracing, although at that point we'll probably use the built-in method in GLSL. Okay, thank you for your attention.